I'm Lane Gurgley with Sure Life Labs. I'm here with my husband, Tony Gurgley. We had a husband-wife tournament today. It was an, another date that we have. We're always having these dates. We're going to show you some tips on how to properly handle your fish and manage your life well. We do a lot of hunting and fishing. Once again, she beat me, so, but that's cool with me. First thing we want to do is uh, show you how to measure the live well and, uh, and to treat the live well. Make sure that your live well is filled to capacity, obviously. Grab yourself a measuring device out of the garage or the house or whatever. Or in this case, we just got a tournament board out of the boat. But you want to measure three dimensions of it. And uh, you want to go with the water depth, which is filled to capacity here, which is sitting right around 11 inches. So pull that out, and what we're gonna do is go ahead and write 11 inches down. The width of it, which is coming up about right here to right there, so we're looking at 14 inches, which is the width. Length of it, which is going back all the way to the hinge back here to where the batteries are, and it's coming up to here, which is really good, by the way. This is gonna increase our volume. We'll go ahead and lay this down, and we're looking right at 22 inches. Go ahead and get yourself a calculator, and you're gonna to want to take these dimensions and convert everything to feet. And so you'll take 11 inches divided by 12, you'll take 14 inches divided by 12, and 22 inches divided by 12. So now you've got feet, feet, and feet. So you multiply the, the depth, the width, and the length of it times 7.5, that's the constant. Those are 7.5 gallons per cubic feet of water. And this particular live well has actually got 15 gallons of water in it. We recommend that you get these wells going prior to even catching a fish. Get them going out there and go ahead and treat them. Now we've got two particular products that we manufacture. Both of these compounds, the Please Release Me and the Catch and Release, the dosage rates are identical. It's one teaspoon of our product per, per 10 gallons of live well water. So basically, want a half a cap of this to treat this live well. Now, you're not going to harm anything if you put extra in it. Actually, we like to do that, especially during the spring and summer months, which will really help calm these fish down. Uh, the reason we have two products is this is your general purpose one. The all around, the ultimate stress releasing compound. You use this all day long. If you do get some fish during the day, it's like, say, yeah, they hook them in the gills, you gut hook them or whatever, they have some wounds on it, you're going to want to make sure you have at least one bottle of this in the boat. You're not going to use this all the time, but if you've got a, a fish that's injured by any means, whether you did it, the hook did it, you know, or whatever, you can put this in a live well with it. It's going to help those wounds or else you can take a pinch of the please release and you put it directly on that wound and it's really going to help save your fish. During particular times of the year, you may start seeing some foam in your live well. You may have an abundance or an enormous sack of fish. Our products uh, stimulate the slime cells of these fish. And because of that, sometimes you can get some foam production. Now, our products do have foam inhibitors built into it, but if you're one of the lucky guys out there, our ladies that catches a big sack of fish and you've got a lot of slime buildup in there from those fish, which is good, by the way, you want that, but you don't want foam on the water either at the same time. Just keep a bottle of this in there and just take the cap, and all you have to do is squirt some in. It's very easy. It only takes a few drops of it, and it'll take rid of that foam. That foam needs to be taken off because it's going to inhibit your tr oxygen transfer in this live well. Foam on that water is like putting a plastic bag over your head. They're going to suffocate because 90% of the oxygen transfer in this water is actually occurring at the surface of this water. So just keep a bottle handy in there. If fish aren't handled properly, you can remove the slime coat uh, that causes bacterial and fungal infections later on. You can break or dislocate their jaw. So I'm going to show you some proper, basic uh, fish handling techniques. First thing you want to do before you handle the fish is get your hands wet. That, that helps uh, reduce the damage to the slime coat. First thing, when you grab your fish, be sure and support it by its tail. Never hyperextend the jaw, which is torquing it open without either supporting it on the tail or body section, or else lifting it vertical. This fish right here, you're, it, the weight is not going to break the jaw because it's in a totally vertical position. You're gonna hold it horizontal. Always support the belly. 
Never release your hand here because this is where what happens, the jaws break or dislocate if you do not support it. The temperature of this water is very, very critical in these boats. In order for you to know the temperatures in your live well, you just need to get yourself a cheap thermometer. Now, this happens to come from my good friend Doug Hannah because he autographed it for me. You can drop that in or else you can get yourself a cheap one from the aquarium supply store that has a suction cup on it or floats or whatever. Just keep it in here so that way you can easily monitor the water temperatures in this live well. Now, water temperature is really critical because the cooler the water is, the more oxygen, oxygen that this water is going to hold. Now, during the cooler months, you may not have to do anything because really your target is 65 degrees. If the lake temperature is 50 or 55, that's great. If it's above 65, let's bring the water temperature down. The reason for that is by bringing that water temperature down to 65 degrees, you're going to lower the oxygen demand on these fish tremendously. You're going to lower it by down to a third of what they normally would consume. Now think about that. I mean, these fish now are not going to be stressing for oxygen because they're not going to be requiring that much oxygen. There's real simple ways of doing this. Carry some ice on board by having Ice cubes, crushed ice, not blocks, okay? Because they don't melt fast enough. You want to bring this temperature down. Just go ahead and drop it in here. Now, this ice has probably got chlorine in it, by the way. And our products, the, both the Catch, Release, and Please Release Me, instantly remove chlorine from all sources. Once you've got it down to your target temperature level, then maintain it. Have these frozen water bottles, milk jugs, whatever you can get your hands on. And a summertime tip, which is very, very useful, is to go ahead and put a teaspoon of our uh, the Catch and Release in the water in this bottle and fill it up with water. That way it's, it's uh, frozen into the water itself and go ahead and take the cap off and then you can leach out in your, in your live well at the same time. And something you really need to do, and remember this please, is go ahead and tear off the uh, wrappers on these bottles. Get as much off as possible with your fingernail or whatever and dispose of it properly in your boat so it doesn't blow overboard and litter the lake. And get it nice and clean because this right here is going to come off with more likelihood in your live well and this can uh, very readily clog up your pumps. We're just going to drop one of those in or a couple of them and check it again in about 30 minutes. That way you'll make sure that you're keeping your live well temperatures down. 3% hydrogen peroxide can be your best insurance policy on tournament day. What I have here is a cup, half cup, plastic cup that you get at, gro at the grocery store. And um, this live well here is approximately 15 gallons. Um, half cup equals four ounces, which is gonna be perfect amount. Uh, it's in between, it's not an under dosage, it's not an overdose, it's, it's just right. And all you do is when you put your first fish in, go ahead and fill this up. You simply add it to the live well. This will keep dissolved oxygen levels at optimum levels all day, even without, uh, in case your aeration goes down, your pumps fail, this will keep your fish alive, literally, with oxygen. A good rule of thumb is to check your live well every 30 minutes, if possible. If you're like me, you switch rods or switch lures that often, um, or you're going to get something, go ahead and flip the live well lid open, check your temperatures, make sure your fish are doing good. You see a fish at the surface or rolled over, then you know it's time to address your live well issues. It's the end of our date today, our husband and wife uh, tournament, and now we're ready to wrap things up and go ahead and uh, bag our fish up. Now, I've taken our, our weigh-in bag and filled it up with live well water because this live well water has been treated and it's also got the right temperature or else you can go ahead where your pump out is on your live well and just hold the bag overboard. It's a real simple way of doing it too. Please don't get it off the back of the transom of the boat in these coves. You've got oil mixtures and things of that nature and the temperature of the water is nowhere near what you probably hopefully got your, your live well temperatures at. So I think we can go ahead and get these fish out because obviously I lost again and the winner always gets to release the fish. And it's a pretty good sack of fish. So her trophy is to release them. See how these fish swam off? This is why SureLife products have been endorsed by millions of surviving game fish for over 25 years.